Hey everyone, welcome back to Dan91's Garage. Today we'll be looking at the MIG setup that I've got for welding up the turbo manifold I've been making for the past couple of weeks. I'll show you my old welder, my new welder, some of the consumables I've bought and also some of my practice welds that I've been doing. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so this is my current welder. It's obviously a gas MIG. It's supposed to be a uh, 150 amps, it says 150T on it, so I'm, guess, I'm guessing that's supposed to be 150 amps. But what with the uh, upcoming log manifold that I'm welding, I'm obviously going to need something with quite a lot of power. Now, most people say that the requirement is about 30 amps per millimetre, so on a good day, if this actually went up to 150, it would be able to do 5 mil. Now, I think that's a bit of a... being a bit generous, really. Quite a lot of manufacturers say that. Uh, so it's more like 40 amps per millimeter really it's uh, a great little welder for doing thinner materials so if you're doing sort of body work for example or if you're just making little brackets and things it's absolutely fine for that if we go to the maximum setting because that's what we're talking about today it's 20 volts 115 amps and that's an 18 percent duty cycle so it says its maximum output is 21 volts and 140 amps so if we go worst case scenario on 140 amps, that takes us to three and a half mil. Now I've given it a bit of a play on some four mil here. I mean, it managed to stick together my welding table, which is quite cool. It's an old Black & Decker workmate for the base. So the frame is 30 mil by 30 mil by three mil thick angle iron. Made a simple frame for that, welded it up bolted it onto the top here and a sheet of three mil thick CR4 mild steel obviously uncoated unplated no galvanizing because you can't weld galvanizing because it'll obviously give off poisonous gases so it's just natural state and it managed to stick that together all right frustratingly I, I got better and better at it as it was going and all the good welds are underneath but never mind so it's perfectly capable of sticking three mil together but I wouldn't really want it's just simply not powerful enough to stick together the four mil plus that I'm going to need to play with a manifold it served me well but it's time for an upgrade. So I've treated myself to a new welder and that should be here by the time this video goes out and that's what the second half is gonna be about. But what you've also got to remember is the amount of power it can produce as per the socket. So this is a standard UK socket, obviously, three pins, 240 volts, and it's a 13 amp socket. So that means the plug can draw 13 amps of current before the 13 amp fuse that's in here will blow. So the most on a 13 amp socket from some of the research I've done with a MIG welder is about 160 amps. And that's when you're really flirting with the line of this thing blowing. But then if we look here, this is a 16 amp socket. And obviously the 16 amp socket is exactly that. It's still 240 volts, still three pin, but it's a different style of plug and that has a breaker which is over there in the main fuse box. So the most powerful MIG welder you can get that runs on a 16 amp socket will run at 180 amps. So if we work it out at 30 amps per millimeter, the best case scenario, which is very generous, that'll be a six mil thick plate, but welded to another six mil thick plate. But like I said, that 30 amp setting will be with a bevel and possibly with or without a root gap. But again, it's always good practice when you get to materials over perhaps two and a half to three mil to, to give them a bevel anyway, just to give yourself half a chance of getting it in there. Um, and also that helps the weld sit a bit flatter. So when you end up piling the wire in to get the amps up, you will then won't end up with this sort of giant caterpillar of a weld sitting on top of two plates. It just helps with penetration and it looks a lot nicer. So best case scenario would be six mil. Uh, but more realistically, if we go with a more realistic sort of estimate of 40 amps per millimeter, we're looking more at four and a half mil. And the steam pipe I'm using for the turbo manifold is four and a half mil wall section because it's schedule 40 tube, not the lighter schedule 10. If I buy myself a decent welder, that's the most powerful I can get for a 16 amp socket. I mean, quite a few garages don't actually have a 16 amp socket in them. I mean, the next step up from that is a 32 amp, which is even bigger and it's very industrial and that's not really what most places have. Most places don't even have a 16 amp. So I'm doing pretty well there. So that's cool. 
Uh, that should be here in a week or so, or if you're watching this video now on the internet, which I certainly hope you are, it's just turned up and we'll get that one out and have a look at it. There is one more thing about this that does make me laugh. Basically, whenever you turn it on, it does this. Stop screaming. Stop screaming, you coward. It's going to be fine. Seriously, stop screaming. Thank you. So there we go. Didn't even touch it that time. So there it is. Next day delivery. It comes in a pretty stout cardboard box. And the outsides of it, as you can see, are made from a honeycomb board. So uh, at least 15 mil thick there, so that's pretty good protection. It did also come wrapped in a nice polythene bag to keep it dust free. And also had these shock absorbing sort of corner pads put on it as well. So I've already been in here once obviously to check it out. So we just have a quick look. Instruction manual. The instruction manual is pretty good, although it's not completely without the odd humorous sentence, but still very good. And there's the welder itself. It's obviously an inverter welder. Not gonna see much of it in the box, so let's uh, chuck it on the table over there. So it's the Artec MIG 180. So 180 amp MIG welder, gas and gasless. You can change the polarity obviously down here so you can then switch your uh, earth lead to the positive and your torch to negative for uh, flux core welding if that's your thing. But the normal setup for gas shielded MIG welding is torch positive and earth lead negative. It's a Euro style MIG torch, so you can use whichever brand you like, and it's easy to replace when the things wear out. It's got a spool gun attachment here, so if you fancy doing a bit of aluminium MIG using a spool gun, there's that facility there. And obviously you can use a stick welder as well, which is what this separate dial's for. Looks pretty easy to use. So you've got a switch here, which is for either stick welding or for MIG welding. So we're obviously on the MIG welding setting. And then this is the spool gun on or off. So that's obviously off. So you've got voltage and wire speed, and obviously wire speed affects the amps as well, as does obviously wire thickness and electrode stick out and all that exciting stuff. So it looks like a great little MIG, haven't used it yet. The only two or three things that bother me on it slightly are, hinges are a bit ugly, although that's not really a performance thing. The door on the side here to load your wire, obviously it's a five kilo spool or a one kilo spool, you can't get anything bigger in it. The mechanism itself for feeding is all metal, so that looks pretty good. And obviously inside there at the top is where you change over for either positive or negative on your torch. But obviously the door only has one catch on it, and that means the front corner of it isn't particularly sort of well secured and it does kind of rattle around a bit that's a bit disappointing I would have preferred two catches that would have helped a bit again it's only a little thing it's not the end of the world but it's just a bit annoying that it does that also you're only ever going to be using one of these at a time if you're doing MIG anyway so it would be nice if there's some sort of blanking plug that goes in here so you'd obviously be able to blank off the one you're not using so it doesn't fill up with crap or get corroded this obviously has several electrical contacts in there so just a little blanking cap to go over that to stop it filling up with dust and crap would have been lovely. Um, again, as long as it's not going to cause a moisture, moisture problem for it, but uh, working in a workshop with grinding and sanding and dust and sparks for a 500 and something pound welder, I don't think it's too much to ask. It doesn't come with a plug, but that's so you can add your own 13 or 16 amp depending on which way you're going. The ends of them are pre-tinned but uh, that's obviously way too long for any 13 amp plug. And it's also way too long for the 16 amp plug I've got to go for. So not exactly much point on that. Would have been nice if perhaps they were a bit shorter and had ferrules on, but again, they're not gonna know whether you're gonna put it in a 13 or a 16, unless you tell them before you buy it, I guess. But yeah, that's it in general. 
So there we are. You get a nice new argon regulator. Single stage two gauge. So that'll do argon and argon CO2 mix. So that's your gas hose. At least a nine mil bore, eight or nine mil bore on that one. So it's a pretty decent hose. Lots of gas flow through that. That's lovely. You obviously see on the cheaper, smaller welders, they only have like a tiny little micro bore hose. So not really designed for this. Again, Euro Torch, MIG or MAG. It's a MIG 15, which is obviously a copy of the Binzel MIG 15. So comes with a few spare tips and things as well. Again, pretty decent sized earth clamp. And again, the nicer DIN sockets on the end of them. The clamp at the end isn't exactly much to write home about, but it will certainly do the job. And as we all know, clamps should be considered consumables really, and you're gonna be replacing this every now and again, but at least the wire is pretty decent, so you won't have to be replacing that. And you even get yourself a little spanner to put your tips in. So I thought to myself, if I buy the best MIG I can afford and put it in the new 16 amp socket, which some of you might have noticed has changed from last time, that's gonna be a great setup for all my future jobs. So quick overview there. Now we'll get it on the stand and see what she looks like fully built. So there's my new welding setup. My old welder's been downcycled and has now become a welding trolley. Made a new front axle for it out of some angle iron and some casters so I can wheel them about flat now whereas the front was a foot before. Also one of them locks so he can't go for a little wander on his own. New flat top little tray on it and some side pieces to stop the new welder falling off. Also changed the back here, added myself a little plate with some rails around it so the bottle stands up square, completely supported rather than half on and half off the sheet metal chassis like it used to. Moved this bar forward by about 10 mil so now the bottle's upright and the chain is obviously still there to hold it on. And then we've got the Artec MIG 180 sitting proud on the top. Wide up the 16 amp plug, two and a half mil cable as well. So that's uh, pretty beefy stuff. And they just went straight in without any ferrules for me. Did have to chop the solder off because obviously the pre-stripped ends were way too long for that 16 amp plug. I mean, the, the pre-stripped stuff was hanging out the arse of it here. So redone that, screwed in obviously my workpiece earth lead. And that obviously, cause we're using gas wire for gas shielded MIG welding, we're in the uh, negative terminal because the torch is positive. I've done a couple of test welds and welded up a few bits and as suspected, the, uh, the quality of this earth clamp has already become apparent in the fact that it's already sort of like half twisted. I think if I trod on that by accident one day, it would be done for. But again, like I say, you just unbolt it here and put a different one on. So it is what it is. So got the gas pipe hooked up as well. It's pretty good, that's sort of like the radius ends or the rounded ends that you simply bolt on here. Decent bore on it as well, but uh, I would have appreciated it if it was actually sort of like a 90 degree bend. So that way you could put it closer to things. As I've, as I've got it at the moment, I've had to put this at a jaunty angle because otherwise it sort of folds flat against this or I have to have the welder the other way to clear this side of the bottle, which then puts the torch at a funny angle for when you're welding. So absolutely tons of hose, as you can see. So I've wrapped around the bottle two or three times, obviously, no kinks or anything. So this is my old par weld regulator. It's only about six months old, so there was no point in really opening up the new one that came with it. So I just carry on using that one. Obviously Argon. CO2 mix, 15%. So yeah, it's all pretty good. The only slight disappointment is, or bit of weirdness is, on the torch as well. It's obviously a MiG-15, which is a sort of Binzel MB-15 copy. But on all the other MIGs I've used, they're obviously gas shielded. When you pull the first half of the trigger, it lets gas out. And then when you pull the second half, it feeds wire into the gas. So you can sort of pre-shroud before you actually send the wire in. And on this particular torch, unless I've got a duff one or the machine's a bit different because it's a, or maybe, maybe because it's an inverter machine, 
but there's no there's no sort of gas for pre-shrouding. You just literally pull the first part of the trigger, nothing happens, and then you hit the second part, and gas and uh, wire come out together, which is is okay. I don't think I've seen a porous weld yet that I've done with it, but it's always nice if you could just like waft a bit of gas in first. I find anyway, but it does have like a little ball jointy thing on the bottom of it to obviously stop it being quite so uh, rigid when you're trying to get some movement out of it. So that's pretty. The torch is pretty good. The trigger's nice as well, nice and predictable, and. Uh, nice to use and that's my new mask it's the par weld xr 9374 24 too many letters you can read that i hope one of those it's a true color one so when you look through it instead of everything looking green like you're looking through an old glass bottle it actually is called a true color one which basically there's a, there's a very slight sort of bluey tinge to it but it's 10 times better than uh looking through the normal stuff obviously auto dimming shades 5 to 13 and a grind mode um, pretty decent size hello hopefully impact resistant pretty decent size screen it's it's a bigger screen than my other one it was only about 60 odd quid and it arrived next day so that's cool and uh fitted out that works pretty well and treated myself to a, a decent set of gloves as well these are esab curved mig gloves so apparently the palm is curved so it more naturally wants to hold the torch rather than fighting against the leather because these can be a little bit restrictive if you're not careful i usually go with the cheap ones simply because i always barbecue this finger like some dirty sausage that falls through the grill so i've barbecued this one a little bit by getting it a bit too close to the workpiece but it's had less of an effect on it than the cheaper gloves so good gloves good helmet now we're ready to do a few test pieces basically i'm not that experienced as a welder but i certainly try my best so i'm gonna have a little bit of a practice on some two mil just to get the settings and also obviously going to need to chop up some four mil so i can get the settings right for that i did have a quick go on two mil the other day and obviously the ratings in the book for what you're supposed to set the machine to were way under what they needed to burn in properly and get any kind of penetration out the back so going to have a little dabble about with some four mil plate and some four mil rings because not only have I got a, I'm, I'm okay in a straight line as long as it's all set up and nice I'm, I'm pretty good in a straight line and, and weaving between sort of like bevels and root gaps I'm okay with but I've now got to learn how to do that on round pipe so everything I have to do instead of being sat down nicey nicey all in a line follow the track I've now got to go from the side up and round as much as I can whilst obviously keeping the right torch angle and stick out and all sorts of exciting stuff so yeah gonna learn for a bit show you some practice stuff and then we'll be ready to knock the manifold together so as promised here's a couple of the test pieces that i've made so this is obviously two mil strip cold reduced i think it's cr4 and it's obviously a fillet weld there so quite a lot of material has gone into that one but uh Managed to get some reasonable penetration through the back, not too much. So a uh, pretty uniform heat through that one, so not too bad. I don't think for a bit of a practice. Obviously the uh, the colder area on the right of that is where I tacked it first and then actually uh, started running next to the tack onwards. But yeah, it's, it's pretty good. There doesn't seem to be too much undercut or anything and uh, seems to have burnt through quite well. So yeah, that was good. So this is the full mill that I've been practicing on. It was obviously some strip that I've cut to length and then put some bevels on it. So 45 degree bevels on both the sides here, no root gap. And I started off in the middle here with the recommended settings from the book and adjusted from here just to see what sort of results I'd get. And to be honest with you, apart from these bottom two, everything else seemed to weld in quite well. The, in fact, the, the factory settings did actually sound really nice and uh, seems to have burnt through okay. So. You can see on the back there's penetration on all of those welds. This one was way too much and that's blown through far too much material. This was the factory settings which has come through just a little bit and the rest of it seems to have fused quite nicely. So probably probably the way to go on those on four mil. This again, depending on how I was playing with it, this has got perhaps a bit too much penetration. This again, perhaps not so much. These ones, they were pretty good, but I was trying a different technique. I was sort of whipping these as opposed to doing the little circles that I normally do. On some of the earlier welds as well, I was doing a zigzag pattern, which is what you're supposed to do through uh, when you've got V-grooved material. But there you go. Um, my old my old welder wouldn't uh, wouldn't penetrate four mil anyway, no matter what I set it to. Whereas this one, 
seems to be uh, quite effective. So those are just a couple of test pieces I've been using to get my eye in and also figure out roughly where the uh, settings need to be on the MIG. And here's a quick comparison of the voltage, amps and duty cycle of old versus new. Feel free to pause it if you need to. So that's going to be it for this episode. As always, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.